What happened May 3rd at the McCormick Reaper Works got the anarchists involved in another labor dispute and ignited the most sensational labor incident of the 19th century. Cyrus Hall McCormick, the Reaper King, had died in 1884. A floral reaper adorned his casket. His last words were work, work, work. His son mechanized the plant. Blades that used to be forged by hand were now forged by steam hammer. This threatened the skilled iron workers. In May 1886, they'd been on strike for months. McCormick hired scabs to take their place. The McCormick strike was over uh, a long-standing dispute that had begun before the eight-hour day had begun that turned on the attempt of McCormick to mechanize the whole process of iron molding and thereby to get rid of one of the strongest unionized forces, the Iron Molders Union. And these were largely Irish. And so there was a very bitter struggle that was going on at that time. Some of the Bohemian lumber shovers and other uh, socialists and anarchists had gone up there in solidarity with the McCormick workers. August Spies had made a very militant speech when the whistle blew to end the shift on May 3rd, locked out strikers attacked the scabs as they left the plant. Police rushed in to protect the scabs. They killed two of the striking workers. Spees witnessed this from behind a boxcar. He saw it. And he ran back to his office on Well Street, and he wrote a protest. And he left it on the desk and said, I want this circulated the next morning. And he told them to put a banner on it. Well, to his great dismay, the banner that somebody put on it was revenge, which was the last thing that should have been put on it, because he didn't mean it to be that kind of thing. A second circular called for a rally the next evening at Haymarket Square. Haymarket Square was an open-air market by day. By nightfall on May 4th, the pushcarts were gone. Chicago's popular mayor, Carter Harrison, was there and made certain the crowd saw him. It would ensure order. It was a fairly peaceful rally. I mean, the anarchists were saying things that they always said, you know, debt to the uh, owner class, revolution. Uh, mayor Harrison rode up and everybody yelled, huzzah, huzzah, Mayor Harrison, you know, and took his hat off and he waved it to people. And it was, it was a little campaign thing. And, and he stayed at the back and uh, the police camp and Captain Bonnefield came up and said, what should we do with this rabble, sir? And he said, basically, let them speak. He's, they've said many worse things than they're saying tonight. And uh, there's no one here. And he said, I'm going to go home. And he goes home. Captain Bonfield dismissed most of his men, not all. The last speaker, Samuel Fielden, remembered the men shot at the McCormick Works. The law is framed for your enslavers, he said. Throttle it, kill it, do everything you can to impede its progress. Bonfield considered this inflammatory. He ordered the police to march. Fielden was winding down. He that has to obey the will of another is a slave. Can we do anything except by the strong arm of resistance? War has been declared on us. People have been shot. Defend yourselves. No one noticed the man lurking in the shadows. Any animal will resist when stepped upon. Are men less than snails or worms? 
In the name of the state of Illinois, I command you to disperse, the police captain said. But we are peaceable, Fielden protested. 